Hello, veteran 0121 here. Welcome back. This is another episode of Dragon Quest 11. In the last episode, we defeated the Tentacular. Or wait, no. No, it wasn't the Tentacular. We did the Michelle the Mermaid story sequence. Apparently, if you choose to lie to the mermaid, uh, it's different, but still sad. I guess there's videos on YouTube that, uh, that show what happens. So, if you're wondering, apparently, from what somebody told me, uh, you can, yeah, you can fucking find that shit on YouTube. Anyway, in this video, I'm going to be going to... If I can... Couldn't find it. <laughs> For some reason. Uh, but in between videos, I did do some more seed farming. I know, that's gonna be like kind of a running theme or joke throughout this playthrough probably since I now know how to farm seeds, but... As you can see, I, uh... Gave some to Serena. She needed some strength. Um, it'll come in useful later anyways, so... There you go. It'll come in more useful later. Uh, right now, she's only got Thunder Thrust. But, in a way, I kind of want to be using her a lot more in a little bit. So, I kind of want Serena's strength to not suck... <laughs> compared to, uh, like, Jade and Veronica, you know? Although I think Jade and Veronica are still gonna deal way more damage. But here we are in Nautica. Yeah, man. We're, like, underwater, we're not wet. Shit, we're fucking breathing, too, man. Yeah, man. All these mermaids are freaking beautiful. I have to pop my clogs. What the hell does he mean what by that? Lot? I want to say he's talking about his heart, but he might be talking about something else. Thinking? I don't know. Yeah, water up the nose does suck. Surely I agree. <laughs> this is mighty crazy. This journey has been fucking crazy. I'm very crazy so far, but yeah, we can talk to this mermaid here if you want to go back. Uh, we're not going to be able to explore this whole area. Uh, we'll be able to explore part of it. There's an orb nearby. The green orb. Yeah, the musical theme we're hearing here is from Dragon Quest VI, apparently. It's a good fucking theme, man. Fits this area perfectly. Crevens. This place is a veritable paradise under the sea. <laughs> Just when you think you've seen it all, you find yourself in Mermaid Town. So we can breathe underwater now? That harp is something else. Well, now we're here, I guess we can find out if that story about the giant pearl is just an old wives' tale or not. Finding the orb is important, but we need to talk to the Queen first. 
We have to tell her about Michelle. Alright. Can do. <laughs> Alright, I think they all say the same. The same type stuff. Ah, uh, yeah, you can talk to this mermaid here, and she will heal you. I don't think she's there after a certain point. So yeah, the, the queen's magic is actually helping us breathe. is handy. So we'd be fucked otherwise. Family matter, huh? I think you get a quest from that guy later. If I remember correctly. Or maybe... Man, it might be a different one. Fish, squid, mermaid, man, all I care about is... Yeah, except uh, the only problem is you don't have anything I care about. Thanks anyway, though. Alright, there's a weapon shop here, but this weapon shop kind of sucks. They decided to put a shark that can't speak English... In charge of the fucking shop. I mean, how the fuck do you expect to make any sales? Fuck. Well, I suppose they don't get too many humans down here, but still. You'd think you'd have your most skilled... You'd figure you'd have your most skilled, uh, you know, interpreter on there, you know? And this mermaid has glasses. Very interesting. Glasses even work underwater? <laughs> it's the first time I've even... Yeah, that's the first time I've even actually thought about that, to be honest. I mean, I don't wear glasses, so I don't know. I know people wear goggles underwater. I don't know if there's actually like, pres I don't know, is there prescription swimming goggles? I don't wear glasses again, so I don't, I don't know this shit. Hey, fish. There's a chest right yeah, here we go. There's a chest with a mini metal in it. Ta da Alright, twenty six now. Cool. Oh, this guy is really jittery, man. Don't worry, man. We're cool. Yeah, all the mermaids, they... They all rhyme when they talk. Yeah, you can talk to that mermaid in the distance area if you want to save your game. I'm not gonna bother. I 
welcome you to Nautica, the land beneath the waves. Oh, what brings you, Prince of Dandrasil, down to these coral caves? Huh? How do you know he's the Prince of Dundrasil? <laughs> I have a second sight that touches every quarter, by which I keep abreast of all the news above the water. Of doomed love between men and mermaids, let us later speak. First, allow me to present the item that you seek. Behold the shining sphere of green, the orb you humans need. The treasures of the world above are marvelous indeed. Consider this my thanks for what you did for dear Michelle. So take it kindly, traveler, and may it serve you well. Alright, so get the green orb. Thank you. I witnessed the whole sorry tale. It always breaks my heart. The tragedy of man and mermaid doomed to live apart. But while the mermaid's burden holds, such romances are blighted. And love between man and sea maiden fizzles unrequited. For years now I have sought a way to remedy this curse. Alas, my every effort ends in failure or worse. You humans cannot help but seem a fragile kind to we, who live five hundred years and more down here beneath the sea. But though the flame of human life burns short, it burns so bright. You never cease to struggle. No, you push, you strive, you fight. And so, your kind admire our kind, but we admire in turn. It is the world tree's will that from each other we should learn. It was the world tree's will that brought Michelle and Kai together. I pray that in their next lives they may stay that way forever. So too was it the world tree's will that brought you here today. But now, dear Luminary, you must be upon your way. So set sail on the tide of time that flows ceaselessly on. And if Yggdrasil wills it, we shall meet again anon. <laughs> Remember, though the paths we walk are filled with twists and turns, all roads lead from the Tree of Life, and to the Tree return. Yeah, interspecies romance. You know, Wasn't even I'm thinking about thinking. that. <laughs> Technically, that's kind of like bestiality, isn't it? Oh shit. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. Hello. Oh no, actually, I'm not tech. I don't know. Are fish considered beasts? Would be called, uh, uh, I don't Darling. know what you would call that. <laughs> okay, yeah, nasty sea monsters. Yep, no need to rush. Listen, very true.
Yeah, you gotta talk to her twice. And if you do, she'll actually give you a clue on where the suggested next destination lies. In the western reaches through a shining rope pool swirls, there lies a fine academy for graceful little girls. The master's an eccentric sort, you might think him quite mad, but if you were to visit him, I'm sure he'd make you glad. So all the vision, okay. Yep. Alright, so that's where we're gonna go next. Matter of fact, might as well just zoom there now. Now, the fastest way to get there is actually. Huh? Might actually be Sniffleheim. Maybe. I don't know. It's about the same. Alright, so yeah, we're gonna be going to the Champ Savage. Could go to the islands in the area. Not gonna bother. Yeah, there's also a village in the south uh, called Phnomnon. How's it going? Eric's never been here, huh? Interesting. Did you want to talk to me? You want to talk? That's not like you. Wonderful. Yeah. I'm just going to go straight there. Not even going to bother with the bad guys.
Dragon Quest V. Dragon Quest V castle theme. makes me wonder, did the Japanese version actually have music for this part? Or like, mock singing? I mean, I know it didn't have voice acting for the most part, but did they actually play a song for this part? I guess I'm glad they didn't. Maybe it was maybe it, maybe it was deemed too cheesy to put in the game. Splendid rendition, girls. Now, to your lesson. May you have a maximally fruitful day on your journey to become miniature ladies par excellence. All together now. Merci, Monsieur Medaille. Merci, mesdemoiselles. What have we here? It is not so often that we receive les visiteurs. It is a minimally common occurrence, in fact. Whoa! <laughs> I do not believe it! Young man, it must have been fate that brought you here! Destiny! La Providence! I sense a great power within you! A power of maximal significance! There is much to discuss, but not out here, eh? Come to my office, and I will reveal all you need to know. It is nearby, a minimal distance. You will see! <laughs> the fuck? Yeah, this place is fucking weird, man. Now, Rab was a stud in his day. <laughs> okay. Damn. You good? No, they probably like a bad boy like you, buddy. Well, dude, you do look like a pirate, man, with that outfit. Did you want to talk to me? Yes! Yeah, the outfits, uh, they, they do, they do, they are nice. They are nice. I didn't use them on my previous playthroughs, but I'm gonna use them now. I think there's a mini model in the shack here.
Uh, so he comes here just to touch a mini metal? And like find it like it's like it's his precious or something like that. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. Yeah, he comes in here. He, he ba the slime basically says that the fucking dude comes in here and fondles it. Like Gollum. Because I mean, isn't that what Gollum used to do in, in, in The Hobbit? He used to leave, leave the ring in part of the cave, you know? He, whenever he'd feel a craving, he'd go back in there, he'd go back in there, and he'd touch it, and he'd stroke it, and be like, My precious! That's kind of like what this guy is with mini models. Electrics. <laughs> it's fucking weird, man. Yuji Hori coming up with some weird stuff. I mean, look at this. Look at this shit. <laughs> What the fuck? We're like practicing how to pick up stuff. That that's ridiculous. Like why? This is so cheesy. But it's great. <laughs> I like it. How to pick up many metals. <laughs> yeah, I can't even understand like like most of what they're saying here. Because it's all in a French accent. I mean, I have to stop and read it really slow. Uh, yes, remind me. I don't think this even matters at all. Nice song. Uh, why would anybody, why would somebody be, in, well, I don't know. I mean, if they're rich, they're probably interested in a lot of things that are valuable. Maybe they think that mini metals are going to be valuable someday, so they want to collect those too. Right? Makes sense. Hello. Zazzy.
All right, so we gotta make a queen's whip for this girl here for three mini medals. It's pretty fucking amazing, huh? All right, lashings of class. That's gotta be at least plus one. Um, I think this whip is actually better for Veronica. However, uh, Veronica's, the scorpion tail's got paralyze effect, and I've kind of offset the attack power by giving her seeds, so, eh. The upgrade probably isn't going to be that worth it, considering I lose paralyze. Paralyze is pretty nice. Anyway, yeah, let's go in here. And talk to this guy. A hip this is garbage. Well, actually, it's not garbage. You can dazzle enemies with it, but... Nah. You can buy eye items here. So if you're missing, like, any of these fucking eye items, you can buy them here. Angel Bells, I remember needing to buy here before. Um, yeah, Sparkly Sap, Cherry Blossom Petals, and Purple Eyes. You can also buy here, which is uh, pretty nice. This middle lady here is amazing. Because she is going to sell us perfection pearls for a hundred gold a pop. Why not? We got some spare money. So there you go, that's where you buy extra ones. So now I shouldn't have to worry about I don't have to worry about crafting to produce those fucking pearls anymore, thankfully. I can plus three my shit. A hell of a lot easier. Alright, so we gotta find a message left in the Dusty Diary. Yeah, she's like giving. It's, I can't even understand what the fuck she's saying or even talking about. I hate accents. <laughs> I know where I know where you gotta go to get the items she wants. Thankfully, but yeah, all that blabbering and you don't even need to go that far to get what she wants, which is kind of funny. Oh, sorry, Mister uh, Mister Slime. Ah, that's your sister, huh? First man that's been allowed in here? Didn't realize this metal guy was such a sexist. Uh, yeah, what's, what's cooking, man? Fried onions from Pang Lai. Hmm. Damn, man, this girl's making me hungry. That stuff sounds good.
Oh, there we go. Sheet of Life. Veronica all the way. Shit, Veronica... Yeah, give her... 11 life seeds. Yeah, I got a few more off screen. I was actually lucky enough to get... into a battle with... two metal slimes and a brownie and... took advantage of it. Deepest, darkest secret? Sure. But yes, we can get a uniform for doing this quest. So we absolutely want to finish this quest as soon as possible. Okay, so we gotta talk to a Hammerhood. Bastien, or however you say that fucking name, I have no idea. But that's what we have to talk to. We gotta talk to the Hammerhood uh, to continue the quest. I, I believe you have to talk to the Hammerhood to um, be able to find the item that we need. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm fairly certain that's how it goes. Bling bling belt. Garbage. I think it like raises charm or some kind of stupid shit like that. Although I'm, although, God, I don't remember. What does it do? It's garbage. I love to hate you, a schoolyard scandal. Matilda appeared? You mean the Matilda from Dragon Quest 7? Is that who they're talking about here? The moment the pip hit the ground would mark the start of the faithful final fight. Scarlet Scarf's Fiddle, okay. It's whatever. Two women duking it out, I guess. I don't know, are women into reading violent comics? Hey, there we go. Mini Metal. I mean, I thought they were into, like, romance novels. And rape novels, like Fifty Shades of Grey.
How utterly boring. This is the hammer hood I was talking about. So yeah. This hammer hood lady tacked up the month's issue and the wind blew it right out the window. And she can't reprint another one for reasons, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna have to go in the direction of the eerie eerie. Yes. Gotta love them puns. Okay, you just say the same stuff, but yeah. Basically, we gotta go to the Eerie Eerie, there's a fucking sign there. And we gotta check behind the sign to get the fucking item we need. Oh, hey, hey, little girl, where are you going? Sterling Silva? Wait a minute. I know who that is. Right, Silvando? <laughs> Identical twins, huh? That's cool. I've always wondered what it would be like to have an identical twin. It would be even better is to have an identical twin that you can completely control. I I'm sure everybody's jumped to that, you know, having like a robot or an identical twin that'll like do all the shitty stuff that you don't want to do, like go to work do chores, you know, that kind of shit. And yeah, this is a zombie... <laughs> Did they... Wait a minute. They admit zombies? Men aren't allowed, but they allow stinky zombies into this fucking place. That's some funny shit. Song of Erdwin. Hmm. Legendary Jean Paul Codier. I'm going to become the greatest fashion designer the world has ever seen! So this is, uh, this is like the Hogwarts of fucking Urgia or some shit, basically. Except a lot more corny and stupid. <laughs> I don't know, I like, again, I, I think a lot of this stuff is just done in... ...fucking humor. You know, it's, it's supposed to be stupid. But yeah, we gotta go to the Eerie Eerie. When the world of the living is fast asleep, those are no longer living may return to walk among us. 
Yeah, okay. I've never liked riddles. Okay, so we can make some crap. All this stuff is garbage. Is the princess to love many metals? Jesus Christ. And I thought the Metal King in Dragon Quest VIII was bad. Actually, he wasn't that bad. It was the daughter that was the one that wanted the medals. Okay, yeah, there's actually an NPC at night in the prep room that I believe we get, we gotta like find her to either get a quest or it's part of a quest. I can't remember exactly. What are they talking about? Make sure to get food. You don't have to worry about food in games like this. <laughs> Heck, you don't even have to worry about food in games like Skyrim. Unless you put a mod in there to fix that. Alright, so we can make some garbage. Uh, basically, it's just neckwear. Neckwear that I usually don't even bother making. All that glitters... All glitter... Wait a minute, what does that say? All that glitters is soon gone. Jeez, I can't even fucking read. Means it's time for me to go to bed pretty soon, huh? Yeah, there's an Alcyon bird up there. But it's gonna get wrecked. In fact, everything in that place is gonna get wrecked. Yeah, that book gives you the clue that the orb is at the Eerie Eerie. Magic key door. Beyond this magic key door is a uniform. So if you're like me and you're fiending over fucking equipment, that's going to increase item drop rate. There you go. Alright. Time to go talk to the headmaster. 
Oh, and over here is an Yggdrasil root. <laughs> Revisit memories of the Luminary's quest thus far, sure. So, yeah, you can more or less just uh, look at old cutscenes. Oh, uh, I've never actually. I've never actually fucked with that shit. I don't want to waste time in a video doing that, that right now, especially when I want to do this part. Pots, here we go. Ta da! Ah, there you are. Now, uh, you must allow me to introduce myself properly. I am Maxime Medagé. And this is my humble establishment, l'Académie de Notre Maître des Médailles, a school in which miniature oh, ladies bloom <coughs> into beautiful, full-grown flowers. As part of the education, we encourage our pupils to journey through all the lands of Edrea and to gather the maximum number of mini medals they can find. As they hunt for medals, they immerse themselves in the cultures of the world and acquire at least a minimum of, uh, how you say, savoir-faire. But every so often, a born medal hunter comes along. I sense this in you. I see the most maximally adroit medal detector of my career before me. However, there is one miniature problem. The academy is for young girls and young girls alone. Sadly, I cannot offer you a place here. But does this mean I will allow such potential maximal to remain untapped? No! By the power vested in me, I hereby enroll you as an honorary member of l'Académie de Notre Maître de Madaille! Oh, oh boy. Thanks, weirdo. <laughs> So yeah, we filled out the one in Puerto Valor. So now we get more... More fucking pages to our album. Hooray. talk to him a second time and there we go and we get 30 we get fit for a king which is basically a recipe book for a costume for rab 
which I'm not really a huge fan of, to be honest. I'm gonna give Jay the, uh, the uniform here. Yeah, a little bit better. Not as good evasion. But that's okay. And yeah, now she looks like a schoolgirl. Yippee for that, huh? Alright, so one last thing I want to do before I end the video. Now if you come out this way... After you get the one quest from the cafeteria, you know, that lady's asking about the memory box, or whatever the fuck it was. I don't know, I couldn't, I can't understand. Every time I read the dialogue from that lady, it just goes right over my head. I have no idea what the fuck she's even talking about. <laughs> Again, it's the fucking, it's the accent. Spoken, it's not so bad, but written, I hate written accents, man. <laughs> Crown Prince of Heliodor has asked my for my hand in marriage, and I cannot refuse him. Not to be a queen, so I kind of think of my... Okay. So yeah, this girl actually went off and married the king, or the future king, of Heliodor. Very interesting, huh? Yeah. Jade is the crown princess of Heliodor. So yeah, I'm not even sure that this lady is aware. But yeah, Jade is actually related to Princess Belle, or Queen Belle. This is a pretty good accessory for Jade for quite a while, actually, because what this does is when you plus three, uh, it'll give you plus six MP restoration per turn. Only Jade can equip it, but it's a damn good accessory. Uh, I've got bunny tails on her right now, but if I don't have bunny tails on her, uh, yeah, I probably quit Bell's Bow, man. Really, really good accessory. I'm probably gonna use it less this playthrough than I have in previous ones, though, just for the simple fact that I have the bunny tail trick now. So yeah, it's gonna be hard for me to unequip that sh that shit. I mean, in boss fights, probably. Unless I got something better. I don't know. That's what MP restoration items for. That's all for this episode of Dragon Quest XI. In the next episode, uh, we're going to be going to the Eerie Eerie. This is Veteran0121. I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.